Welcome to Call on the Midwife with Charlene Campbell. Hello, I am a midwife for many years in four different countries, Canada, the United States, Jamaica, and Mexico. I've worked in all those different countries and I'm retired and I do this full time. I, I teach people how to prepare for a coming day when things will become unsafe in the hospitals in the United States and other countries and where we will need to have knowledge and supplies prepared ahead of time if we're going to avoid some very, very, very potentially challenging times. So they will be cha challenging, I'm sure. And it's already getting this way. <laughs> I've just heard this week that Utah hospitals and Washington hospitals, directly from people in the hospitals, um, that they're they're loaded with the virus uh, people with their sick and so We're going to prepare to be able to help women at home and or in a birth center if that's available Whatever's available. So here I am today. We're going to do our part two of Helping a mother cope in labor if whether that's yourself or you're helping someone else um, I've got part two of that um, I'm also going to review just because um, I think a lot of people are watching me that haven't actually been to our four hour class. It's like a 911 birth response class for unexpected childbirth in the low resource setting. And that's called the Errand of Angels program. I've mentioned it a little bit. But this is a little birth reference card that we give out at our classes. And it just has a few things. And if I have time today, I'm going to go over those for you. Okay. The other thing that I do uh, at our classes is I don't charge money, but in exchange, people um, provide items for our kit. So if any of you people, these kits are kits that we create and give to mothers in need. Okay. And so any of you who would like to take part in that, I'll leave the list down below and my address and feel free to either drop them off or mail them if you um, feel inclined. Um, we take the um, eight by eight double ply um, surged on the edges or zigzagged on the edges squares. And those are the eight by eight and the 12 by 12 double ply. We take them in t-shirt fabric or flannel and I'll put that list below. That's the mother birth kit with the family cloth kit in it. The family cloth kit is a sustainable kit that you use to help you with um, bathroom needs, the whole family's bathroom needs, like instead of toilet paper. So this all replaces all the tree products, um, paper products that you would use for your family's hygiene and sanitation, including childbirth, menstruation, and bathroom needs. And so, and then this kit is the birth kit, which is a sustainable, reusable birthing kit for the mother. And so my, my goal has to been, has been to help community members to get their own kits and then help me create kits because I know we have a lot of people in our communities who don't have kits or won't have kits or can't afford kits or what have you. And so I'm making a lot of extra kits so that I can have them here. And also, I've been able to send them out to several post-disaster settings for the midwives to use on the ground because I have contacts in a lot of different places. So anyway, those are two things I wanted to just mention. And today I have a great surprise because um, I've been doing some research and some uh, fun studying up on tinctures. And I am going to make three tinctures today with you. Okay. The three tinctures that we're going to make, I'm also going to show you, actually I'm going to take, make four, but I'm also going to show you my latest mullen uh, gathering, which I got some nice mullen plants. Um, I want to show you my latest roses too that I've been gathering. Um, and I'm also going to make, this is yellow dock. So I showed you on one of my last videos um, that the yellow dock is everywhere here. I'm in southern, southeastern Idaho, but it's, it's kind of everywhere, yellow dock. And 
So this is really good for keeping mom's iron up high during pregnancy, and that is going to be key in unexpected situations where we maybe don't have prenatal vitamins or things like that. So I'm going to make a small tincture. I'm going to just make it in a small little um, container like this. And uh, then I'm going to make three other tinctures, okay? I'm going to make one that's the wild rose, okay? These are all wild rose um, leaves, or, or petals rather, dried, that I've dried myself from my own yard. This is all from my own yard. We do have seven acres, but still it's, it's all from my own yard. And then the mullen is the other one. Now this tincture would be excellent if, and, and this is something that I'm going to actually use for myself because I have had issues, especially since this last bout with the smoke. You know, we had a lot of smoke. I've got like literally sores on my back right now where it's coming out, the smoke from the smoke. It was so smoky here. It was like you went outside, you felt like you were inhaling, you know, pure smoke and it smelled weird. It did. Anyways. <laughs> but even for anything that has to do with lungs. So it could be a viral infection, a bacterial infection. It could be, we won't say the word, but you know what I'm talking about. Any kind of virus um, or, or even asthma, something that affects your lungs, okay? Now we're gonna make a tincture out of this and then you can take that orally. You can take that mullen tincture orally, okay? All right, and then um, the other one I want to do today, which is one that I, I'm excited about doing, um, these are rose hips that I've gathered from my rose bushes. And I'm going to make a tincture out of these that I can take orally for the, and it'll have behind vitamin C and um, other properties of the roses, which the roses are huge in so many things, like for a tincture to take internally. Um, for I'm going to take these myself as well because they're good for anxiety, insomnia, um, they're good for heart pain, so grief, any kind of grieving, if you've lost family, if you've been ostracized, isolated from your family, um, that's what's happened to me, it's just my entire family live in other areas, and I'm, I miss them a lot, you know, and um, so I grieve, <laughs> I do. So this is really good for that. This is good for people who are grieving, healing, um, having a hard time sleeping, maybe having a hard time with all the events that are going on around the world, having a hard time with their emotional emotional modulation. Um, then Rose is our friend. Our Rose is our friend. And so um, the last one, I think that's it. That's everything, yeah. So I'm gonna make those after I do the teaching on the childbirth in the unexpected setting, unexpected childbirth in the low resource setting, okay? Hmm. Um, and before I start, I want to read you just about our classes that we do, um, this four hour class that we do, which is really just a nutshell of our, my teaching. Um, but here's a little um, quote from my good friend, Amy Adams who was talking about my, my work, and I just wanted to read it. In the days of he ahead, it will be so important to be able to have babies at home with confidence, love, and emotional support. I am grateful to be learning from an excellent teacher and mother who has over 30 years of experience in midwifery, Charlene Campbell, Thank you for erasing fear and anxiety one expectant mother at a time. Amy Adams. And I thought that was really nice. I found that and I thought, well, I'm going to read that because, you know, I think it's nice to be able to have a vision of what this is. And I appreciate you subscribing and liking my videos. It gives me the <laughs> impetus to want to keep doing it. I'm doing it for the Lord my Savior Jesus Christ and for the women of this world and their families and I would really appreciate your support in any way if you want to donate um, you can donate either cash or items for our our kits and everything just goes to the kits thank you so much for your support okay well let's get into our, our lesson for today
Um, I hope you enjoyed the visualization for a pregnant mother, even if you're not pregnant. I think it's really good to listen to that. And then you can be able to pick out a few things in there that you could maybe help a mom with if she's feeling anxiety. Um, and just, you know, learning how to modulate your voice, learning how to speak softly. One thing I realized was that the the tone or uh, the level of the sound is quite low, and I apologize for that. I'll try to speak up more. Um, I noticed that. I think it's when I get into that calm, calm mode, it's so tempting for me to talk really, really, really softly, which I do at births, and it's no problem, right? So anyway, okay. So uh, we talked about transforming pain. So how are you doing with that? And and any of you who, even if you're not pregnant, you could still practice those visualizations, and that will really help you to have the skills that you're trying to help the mother have also. And those skills are um, learning how to deep breathe, learning how to belly breathe, learning how to identify what you're feeling so you can transform it. So if it's pain, then you're using visualization. Light can really help. We, we went through that on the other one where you can bring in light different colors of light are nice um, and bring that light in around your belly some women visualize the sun expanding in where their cervix is visualize the sun expanding visualizing a flower blooming and opening um, so these are some things i think are really powerful for you as a helper i mean even that one thing just to say to mom like first of all helping her pace so pacing is slowing down pacing is how fast or slow you're going and usually if you're going too fast you're going to end up having anxiousness and you're going to create that fear pain cycle i told you fear tension pain cycle from read dr grant lee dick reed's book childbirth without fear that's a classic childbirth book from the mid-century and it's very 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 helpful to understand that and so um you know, you can help the mother to be able to calm down, slow down. We talked about having your eyes kind of more half masked rather than totally bright and open. And that's another reason why you, it's nice to have the room, uh, low lighting in the room. Um, nice music that's not too loud and not too, um, I mean, it has to be something that's going to jive with her. So she has to be involved with choosing it, or it has to be something that you know jives with women generally. And then if she doesn't like it, she can tell you. And having women feel really empowered and letting them know that if they have something to say, that it's okay to say no. It's okay to tell you what they need and to never take anything personally because women can get kind of be a little bit, they can be actually quite intense <laughs> during the labor and they can kind of seem like they're angry um and, but just or they can be abrupt you cannot you cannot have a soft skin in that sense soft in your heart but hard on your back you don't take anything personally but you're soft and open-hearted for her when she needs you and you don't ever hold a grudge or anything and you just encourage her to do what what's best for her okay so I'm going to take another sip. <laughs> um, all right. How are you today? I hope you're well. And like one of the things that I wanted to just say about those guided visualizations just before I move on is this. Um, I learned in my several pregnancies that unless you actually practice those, <laughs> fairly regularly especially in your last trimester of your pregnancy you may not be able to just glide into that during a very painful contraction you may just be too overwhelming that's why practicing can really be helpful and i highly recommend it i highly recommend it for the midwife as well so that she can um she can have a sense of what she's trying to teach this woman and you know be able to really help her in a way that's authentic and practical and effective okay that means that you almost have to embody that piece 
You have to be able to embody the um, the calm and the trust where you're not panicking, you know, where you're just taking deep breaths and you're turning over to God anything that's fearful, anything that's feeling out of your control. You're just turning it over to the angels, turning it over to God. We talked about that too, where you you kind of give over the things that you can't really manage or you're feeling overwhelmed with and then they can transform them give them back to you as light and that light can permeate you with confidence strength and an inner reservoir of resilient strength we talked about accessing that inner reservoir of strength and we we talked about seeing it as a ball of white light or it can have other colors fuchsia and blue maybe and are right around the baby and all through the the belly there and you're just seeing that light just enhancing the baby's experience and everything's just becoming lighter and more um more optimally healthy and vigorous the baby's doing great and also we talked about visualizing that visualizing the baby talking to the baby um, you could talk to the baby too, even if you're not doing it vocally. I've done it so many times. You can check in with the baby. Um, you can talk to the baby and the baby can help you to know what to do at times. I, I just know this is true. Um, I've had experience with it. Okay, so we also talked about identifying the pain as good pain, baby pain. This is good pain. This is baby pain. And then also allowing yourself to see it as something different than pain too. Um, and I think that helps you to be able to transform it into something more manageable, which um, see it as sensation, intensity, um, pushing, pressure. So other words that take a little bit of the edge off the intense um, psychological sort of uh, triggering of that word pain. So we can see it, we can, we can kind of um, affect the feelings and sensations by our perception and the way we perceive it and how, how we formulate our reference to it and it it um, it helps to think in positive ways it helps a lot because women are super highly suggestible and we are highly suggestible when we're in labor when even when we're pregnant especially as the labor is approaching we become more and more highly suggestible so keeping ourselves in really good energy not watching any baby shows that are sensationalistic with negative not letting anyone tell you a negative baby story really just putting your hand out in your mind if you have to and just say no i'm not listening to this because when somebody puts a negative baby story into your mind or you're watching it on a show that's sensationalizing all this negative stuff you're literally creating fear you are you're creating fear for you and for your baby so it's just it's a no-no. I don't recommend that at all through the pregnancy or anything. You just say no when people try to tell you bad stories. Unless it's a positive one. Just say, I don't want to hear it unless it's something really good. And even if it has a good ending, but it had a bunch of bad stuff in the middle. Mm -mm. We want to put the positive images, the positive images of our baby in an optimal position. So that means with the baby's back to the mama's belly and to the the baby's front to the mother's back that way it's not as painful when the baby's coming out the, the, it's not like bone on bone which we don't want and i'll teach you some methods that you can use to help the baby's turn using um, the rebozo it's a wonderful way of using the guatemalan scarf that helps you kind of jiggle that baby into a good position and if you watch some of my other films you'll see that we do that a lot but I'll show you at some point, I will include that. I need another person or two to, to really do justice to that. So we'll have that for another day. But anyway, so we talked about um, the guided visualization, um, the sun one, I forgot to mention another part of that one. The, the sun visualization is to see the sun as your cervix and it's expanding. It can really help to look out at the sun and then close your eyes and have it in or to have a candle if you are able to do that have a candle flame burning and i also brought like the mother can also have like we talked about having a focal point like i just brought this because it's it's a really nice focal point that i've used for my own breathing technique uh 
exercises. But you could have that like sitting somewhere that you could be looking or it could be a picture up on the wall or, you know. Having a mobile one means that she can take it with her, you know, if she's going to the hospital or a birth center or to a place of refuge where she's going to have her baby, she can grab her focal point. Could be even just something she paints during the pregnancy that has like the sun expanding on it or um, a spiral like that I find is really helpful. A spiral is a really good focal point because that image is very helpful for kind of, the baby kind of almost spirals out because it has to do all these maneuvers and it almost is like a, it's like a, it's like a spiral. Um, yeah, okay, so we talked about that and then we also talked about using the flower and I like to use a rose. Um, I often will use a white rose. I don't know why, but it just comes into my mind. And then, you know, you can have her see it kind of closed and then you can have her see it expanding and expanding and expanding as this white rose opens up. And then she can visualize the her cervix as the white rose expanding. Anytime you use these, these images, they really help you to get rid of any unconscious um, programming that's creating fear or blocks to your birth, which is, it can really help a lot psychologically and it gets the hormone cocktails going. Okay, and that's one of the number one things I've talked about in the other videos a lot, I can't stress enough, is to really understand how sensitive the mother is, even if she's not conscious of it. And that hormone cocktail is gonna be dependent on whether she's treated well, she feels safe, She's um, sovereign in her decision-making and she's able to feel that she has the support team that she needs to give birth and the confidence that she needs and people are rooting for her and not necessarily have an agenda for her or a timeline for her, but that they're able to just um, really support her in what she needs. And our picture just froze, but I'm going to keep going because it seems like it's still um, going and hopefully a our picture will come back. So um, we talked about surrendering and how important the idea of surrender is and um, allowing yourself to surrender to the outcome of the birth as out of your control, basically, and that you are more of a, um, a person who is there to safeguard the mother's, you know, privacy, to bring her things that she needs when she needs them, to help her up to the bathroom, to help her change positions, to give her fluids every two hours, to make sure she voids a minimum of every two hours during the, um, during the labor, and other things just to help her be comfortable. That's really your job, is not to really do anything heroic or interfering, because that will affect the hormonal cocktail. We're still going, so I'm just going to go. I don't know why the it's gone frozen, but I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to keep going. Um, now, having her surrender to her body is a really big thing. And understanding positions, um, understanding what are good positions. I mentioned a general idea of keeping the mama, you know, not necessarily constantly in an upright position she might have to lay down and have rest in between but from the time she's um, about four or five centimeters you wouldn't know that but if you look on my other video I explain how to know when she's in what we call active labor where contractions are lasting for a full minute or more and coming every three to four minutes and that's been going on for one to two full hours that's active labor now that can be slightly different with a mom who's had a lot of babies, a multip, we, or a grand multip who's had more than five children. And it, so she could have like, she could go from like being barely in labor and then suddenly she's pushing the baby out. So if she's had a lot of babies, you can't go by that rule. Um, but if she hasn't, then she should try to stay in upright positions. So what are some good upright positions? Um, well, a squat is a great position and it's excellent to practice during pregnancy. Having support on each side is really nice if she can. Um, so she can be in a standing supported squat or a really low squat, their legs um, wide and her feet as flat as possible. 
Sometimes she might need something under her back or behind her back or under her butt to kind of help her in her squat. Um, but if she practices during pregnancy, like I said, that will make a big, big difference in her labor so that she can squat without a lot of help. Or she might need a little bit, but she'll have a lot more strength in her squatting bone muscles. So I highly recommend squatting every day for a good, you know, two five minute se sections of time, maybe morning and night. And eventually you can expand that to 10 to 15 minutes each time. Um, okay, is my picture going to come back? <laughs> I think it's gone again, but I'm going to keep going. Okay, so we talked about allowing yourself to surrender to the outcome of the birth and for the mother to surrender herself to the outcome also. But also with having put a lot of positive stories, a lot of positive intentions, a lot of positive affirmations. I went over those in the guided visualization. I am peaceful. I am sovereign in my decision making. I am surrounded by loving, caring people at my birth. My baby is happy and I know exactly what my baby and I need for my labor, delivery and postpartum times and etc. You get the idea. And you can write your own affirmations as well. And she could write her own. Okay, so I talked about the squat and really squatting into the sensation, letting go of resistance. So it's really important for the mom to be able to practice that. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but having the out breath longer than the in breath is really good. So setting the intention with sound, music, aromatherapy can be really nice. Um, sometimes water, if, if you have it, either by a shower or a tub can be really soothing and it can also help cut the pain in a tremendous amount. It can release pressure and pain for the mother. And um, having the right birth team, I think the visualization that we did where you talk to your baby, I did that in the guided visualization for the pregnant mother video that I did recently. And I think it's really powerful for mothers to actually have these meditation times where they talk to their baby and they talk to God and they talk to their themselves and they just visualize what is best and they will start to see who's supposed to be at their birth and who who's supposed to be where they're supposed to have their baby it may not be exactly where they planned but um i've i've had this experience myself where i did this and i realized that i just wasn't comfortable with my care provider and i changed mid-pregnancy which isn't easy to do but i can see a lot of moms are doing that right now in many areas because of the hospital uh, overloaded with COVID, you know, viral patients and other patients that are potentially um, contagious in this pandemic that we are in right now. So this is wisdom. So we need to, so upright positions can also include leaning forward, anything to do with leaning forward. Um, I highly recommend that, um, you study more on this. I have a, a really nice film and manual if you're interested. It's called Labor and Delivery. You can get it um, from Claudia Oracle at her healthypreparedness.com site if you're interested. There's also a video on there about that film, but that's a good one. Hey, we got our film. <laughs> that's a good one to uh, check out. You can go to her website to get that. Um, I think connection with my body, my baby, my God. I talked about that. We went into that a little bit in the visualization too, where we're, we were connecting with God through this light coming in, um, visualizing it all through our body and in our belly. And you can do that in the labor too. And you can help the mom visualize that too. And then um, connecting with the baby. So talking to baby, calming baby down, calming mommy down. And also... Um, just talking to yourself and this is a little exercise the mother can do and you can help her is just to say to herself and she can do this in her journal if it's in her pregnancy but or it could be during the labor she can say i love you like say her name is is margaret 
I love you, Margaret. I love you. What do you need, Margaret? What do you need in today? What do you need for your body? So it might be like, oh, you get an idea that you should be drinking more water. Or you get an idea that um, whatever. You need to change your doula because your doula is more medical than what you really wanted. Um, whatever the impressions are that come to you, then you, you journal those. And you follow those impressions. That's how you build intuitive skills. Is by listening and not doubting and not questioning these ideas that are coming in. And if they're coming in when your intentions are pure, when you've done, you know, a prayer and you're, you're doing that guided visualization, you're doing breathing, you're really, really surrendering. Those are, those are true impressions. They are. Because why else would they come during those times where you're asking really important questions? Your guides and your angels and your heavenly father and mother, they want to answer you. So of course they are answering you. So it's mostly about just confidence in the answers and the intuitive answers we're getting. Our higher self, the Holy Ghost, however you, spirit, source, however you want to say it. Um, and then let them lead. So letting the mother lead is really important. Letting her lead, letting her feel like she is the lead. So if she feels like moving, if she feels like, you know, doing all these things, you can support her in that. Keeping mom upright will help her to be able to manage the pain better, whether that's squatting, walking, rocking, dancing, hula hoop, whatever it is, um, sitting on the toilet, leaning back over the back of the toilet with pillows that can be really good, squatting on a stool, like a birth stool can be good. Um, I have a couple different birth stools and I think they're really handy and I have a plastic one that can go in the tub and I have a regular wooden one. Um, I have just a metal one that you, basically all it is is a shower stool and it can double, it can easily double as a birth stool. It should be really good for easy to get the placentas out who are, that are stubborn is getting the mom on the birth stool and then she can push the placenta out. Okay, I think I'm almost done. Let the mother lead. Use breath, movement, and moaning. We kind of went over that, using breath and using moaning. Longer on the out-breath than on the in-breath. Okay. Um, I'm going to save this for another time because this has taken so long. But anyway, that'll be for next time. And I will also go over the items on this next time too to give you a bit more information. But for now, we're going to go ahead and I think we're just going to make our tinctures. So just to give you an idea, I want to show you before I start, I just want to show you my, um, I can't believe we had a kind of a lapse, but it came back. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> here we are. Okay, here we go. The roast is cooking for dinner. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> David's making roast. Okay, um, we're going to go out here into my uh, front room. Let's go turn the light on. This is my house. That's, this is my front room. This is a really nice picture right here. See that? I bring that to all my classes. That's Heavenly Mother passing the baby along. <laughs> okay, so here's a bunch of yummy... Um, I just wanted to show you this. It's such a great little batch. It's purely dried now. You see? That's the... Um, I'm going to take a couple of these. I want to put some of these flowers in my tincture. I'm actually going to pull this flower off of there. And then I've got a lot of nice um, roses here drying up. So beautiful. Anyway, you see, you can use the flowers and the leaves. And I want mine to be really potent. I'm actually going to take one of these big leaves because... Depending on how old the plant is, it has different potencies, different different potencies. So picking picking it at different stages is okay with the mullein. And getting some of the, you know, these flowers. Where is it? Yes, there. You see how pretty they are? Yeah, they're really pretty. Okay. So we've got our vodka. Zoe says you don't have to have expensive vodka. Just get whatever you can afford, whatever you can get. 
So I'm not sure what David got, but it's going to do. <laughs> it's what we have. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to grab it. It's, it's, it's called Monarch. It's just a plastic bottle of plain vodka. Okay. And <laughs> I'm kind of excited about making these. I just want to make sure that you can actually see me. So I'm going to actually move this because the lighting might not be as good, but whatever. I think that'll be better for me to be able to get to my table and do what I need to do. Okay. I've got my big leaf and my flower that I'm going to add to my mullen. And that's going to be for lungs, respiratory illness of any kind, asthma, Pleurisy, allergies. Okay, we are going to make this in a nice big, this is a half a, a quart jar. Okay, I am going to put my flour in. Just broke it up a little bit and stuck it in there. And now I'm going to take these big leaves and stuff them in. And now I've got some other ones that are dried right here. I'm just going to pour those in the jar. There we go. These ones are really kind of fluffy and pretty. See how fluffy? They're quite thick. Okay, and I'm actually going to put got another few here just to fill it right up. You want to fill it right up with your with your foliage or your flowers, whatever you're going to do. Now these, I'm going to leave these for probably about six weeks. And every day I'm going to go in and shake them a little bit. And then this will be internal tincture for, like I said, it could be for more than that too. It could be for a general virus and just a general virus. But if it's a respiratory, that's specifically what this is for. And I bless this bottle. I bless all of these ingredients and I thank God, Mother God, Father God, and the whole earth, Mother Earth, for all of these and all the people that helped bring them in, into my home and for the knowledge to know how to make them. Now I want to cover the, um, cover the, um, the leaves up nice and well, so there you go. The, the flowers in the bottom, the leaves are in the top. I'm going to stick my cover on my jar. And there's my mullen. I'm excited about it. I've been really enjoying the mullen. It's it's a great, I, I make tea out of it. I was going to do that for you, but I'll show it to you another day. Um, how I make, how I use them in teas. Now, the red, uh, or the uh, wild, uh, rose I'm going to actually do in this I'm going to use I really like these I don't know if you guys have these but they're really nice for using when you're doing, using herbal making herbal preparations okay I've got that nicely done and now I'm going to just take the vodka again whoopsie <laughs> vodka no, just kidding <laughs> I don't really like vodka. I've actually tasted it when I, I've tasted it when I was a younger person in my early twenties. I have not had a glass of vodka. A white tuck just flew by. I have not had one since. I did not like too much. I could have drank more than I should have. <laughs> okay, so I'm pushing these down so they're nice and immersed. Look at how pretty. Okay, we got our wild rose. I'm actually just gonna throw in a few white because uh, I happen to have these here. And I kind of want to have just a little more variety in there and I can see that I can fit them. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw just a couple more of these really nice white blends that I've just done. Seems like they, they took up uh, less room once they got wet. Okay. I talked about sound therapy last time with you. I'm going to give you one more little.
inside, maybe, as the sound goes through them. <sighs> That's so cool. Like, I've never done it before with roses in it. That's really neat. <laughs> okay. Now, we are going to do the rose hip tincture next. I'm so excited about this. It's so much fun. Okay. These are nice ones. They're from my, from my plant out there. Okay. I might have a few too many in there. Okay. So there's our rose tips. See how pretty they are. And monarch vodka. You don't have to have monarch though. You can get any kind. This is just this is just the one David found for me. And as Zoe said, cheap vodka is okay as far as she's concerned. So I was like, just come down. Okay, there it is. Rose hips, full of vitamin C. It's really good and yummy. Okay, six weeks and I'm gonna flip that. Now, my last one is the yellow dock root. I'm gonna do it in a half a, a pint jar. All right. And I think this one's just going to go in. I'm just going to see if we can get as much as we can in there. There we go. Got most of it in. There it is. Yellow dock. And I'm just going to pour in some of our Monarch vodka. There we go. It's covered nicely. I'm going to put the lid on it so it stays nice there we go that's our yellow dock root tincture ready to sit in the dark place and i'll take them out on the night of the full moon which is coming up um, in a little while and uh, that'll help so um, i thought i would just close with the song since i promised i would teach you some songs for your circles this is one that we've sung probably the most. We've sung, we've sung this song for most of all the songs at our circus. This is just happened to be one that I knew, and it, when we started doing them a few years ago, um, this is one of the songs that I happen to know. I'm gonna take a little drink though, and then we'll be done. Oh. Okay, <clears throat> just gonna sing it short. Tis a gift to be simple, tis a gift to be free, tis a gift to come down where we ought to be. When we find ourselves in the place just right, it will be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend we shan't be ashamed. To turn, turn, twill be our delight till by turning, turning we come round right. Thank you. Have a blessed day.